I decided to make a video because tonight is a Saturday. My wife works tomorrow night, but I want to get these books, these um, used books I got at thrift stores. I want to put them down in the lower level into the library and I don't like keeping things up here stacked around. I just feel kind of like everything is closing in on me. <clears throat> so first of all, I want to mention uh, today it is 8.51 at night here in West Michigan. It is a Saturday. It is the 21st of January. Today it was a warm day. It was like spring today. It was like 50 degrees. All the snow has melted. I was looking at my live journal, Crooked Fingers, from last year, and it was snow outside. I hope it doesn't snow in February. Last year in February, from when I looked at my Crooked Fingers online diary in February, there was snow. I hopefully, hopefully the snow will at least not come in snowstorms and blizzards. I don't mind sprinkles or light snow but nothing really heavy so anyway today i ended on my diary on page 58 so tomorrow the 22nd if i live through the night i'll be on page 59 so that's what i wrote in my diary today uh is a saturday so this morning i don't uh, I didn't really, um, I read a little bit of that book, Godly Prayer, and its answers according to my diary. I wrote down this quote. No, that's from yesterday, sorry. <laughs> that's from yesterday. Today, what I read this morning, well, this morning I didn't read anything. No, this morning I woke up at 7.30, I was kind of out of it. And I didn't read anything until I went to the Book Nook. The Book Nook is a used bookstore at the Hendrick District Public Library, about a couple of minutes from where we live here in Holland, Michigan. And I volunteer there on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And when I was there, I primarily read this book, American Philosophy, A Love Story by John Kay. And what he does in this book, it's like a memoir, but he also kind of traces the history of the development of American philosophy. He starts with Waldorf Emerson, and then he goes into William James. Uh, like, uh, he has a chapter here, Walden in Frozen Lakes. Uh, Freud and self-reliance. We know that Emerson wrote that famous essay, Self-Reliance. So I was really enjoying this. I read this today at the Book Nook. And this afternoon, I've been, I read Life at the Bottom, The Worldview That Makes the Underclass by Theodore Del Ripple. That's all I've read today. But like I said, I, I went to thrift stores last week uh, and I found these used books, and I thought I would show them tonight so I can put them down in the lower level in our library. The first thing I found was Green Mansions. It's a novel by W.H. Hudson. Uh, this is an older novel. It was first published in 1916, so I found that. And then I found uh, a Jim Harrison. Uh, for those who watch my videos know I collect Jim Harrison. This is his novel, Del Delvi, Delvel, a novel. And I found this book kind of interesting. It's the history of jewels. It's called Jewels, A Secret History by Victoria Finley. Like she has chapters on like um, like amber, jet, pearl, opal. Then she has sapphire, ruby, diamond, and she so it's like a history of these uh, jewels. 
look kind of interesting. Then I found this novel by Ake Atkinson, which I have already, but I didn't, couldn't remember. But if I see her writings, she's a, she was born in York and now lives in Edinburgh with her two daughters. This first came out. It's called Behind the Scenes at the Museum, a novel by Kate Atkinson. This came out in 1995. Uh, I didn't know I had a hardback copy of this, but I have two copies. And then I have this novel by Cynthia Horzak. Hozik. Hozik. I collect her novels. She is, uh, she writes essays, novels, short stories, have won num numerous prizes and awards, including the American Academy of Arts, uh, Oh Henry First Prizes, the Guggenheim, she lives in New York. I collect her. I didn't have this. I didn't know she had written this novel. It's called The, the Pewter Master, Mr. No, uh, Papers. It says here, Ruth Pewter yearning for a life of mine, her idol is George Eliot, finds herself mired in the lowest circles of the city bureaucracy. Her love life is hopeless. Her fantasies are more influential than Wayne reality. She takes Hebrew lessons from an uncle who died before she was born. She makes a gohem of the earth of her house plants. Still, she turns out to be the best mayor of New York City has ever elected, with the most unusual campaign manager. Soon enough, though paradise gained becomes paradise lost, and the impact of getting exactly what you want and then losing it plays itself out in dramatic and surprising fashion. Wildly invictive, wicked, wise, and funny, the putter Mr. Papers is a brilliant literary force. So yeah, I'm always looking for her novels. She's worth reading. Then I found uh, Shirley Jackson. Uh, there's been a new biography on the writer Shirley Jackson just come out. I plan to buy it sometime this year. I collect her writings. This is more of her uncollected short stories by Shirley Jackson. Just an Ordinary Day. I was really pleased to find this. And then I found uh, this uh, book, The Fellowship, the story of a scientific revolution. Gilbert, Bacon, Harvey, Wren, and Newton by John Gibbon. The Royal Society of London. It's uh, looks really interesting. And then I found this Brett Easton Ellis. He wrote American Psycho. This is his novel Lunar Park. Uh, I've been really kind of pleased. I found lately three of his novels used. And I didn't know he wrote Lunar Park. So I can add this to my Brent Ellis, Brent Easton Ellis collection. Looks really interesting. Then I found this really old biography on Louis May, on Louisa May Alcott. It's called Mrs. Alcott of Concord, 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 Massachusetts. The story of Louis, Lu, Louisa May Ancar, Alcott, the world she shared with Emerson, Thoreau, and Hawthorne by uh, Marjorie Worthington. It's really an old book, you can tell. I think it was published in 1958. But when I see those words, Emerson, Thoreau, and Hawthorne, I immediately buy anything because I collect books on the American Transcendentalist Movement. I collect books on Louisa May Alcott. Anything to do with Concord, Massachusetts. Those are like tr words that I just pick those books up and buy them. Then I found, I, I collect books on the sculptor Henry Moore, and I found this, The Life and Work of the Great Sculptor Henry Moore by Donald Hall. Donald Hall was a poet. Uh, he wrote other things. Uh, this is by him. It's really an old book. This came out in 1966. Uh, like his sculptors, I'll show you. But kind of uh, sculptures. See, it very abstract kind of sculptures. 
I have several books by Henry Moore. Then I found this paperback by Ina O'Brien, uh, The Country Girls Trilogy. I have this in hardback. I found this paperback. It's a trilogy of three of her novels, which were The Country Girls, The Lonely Girl, Girls in Their Married Bliss. I really like uh, Ina O'Brien and her writings and her novels and short stories. Then I found this novel by Stuart Onan. I collect him. This is his novel, A World Away. Then I found a novel by Pat Patrick White, who is an Australian writer, A Fringe of Leaves. I have this in paperback. This is really an old hardback of his. This came out in by Viking Press, New York. This came out in 1976. Looks really interesting. And then a friend of mine on BookTube, uh, Steve Donahue, not Donahue, Dohan, I can't put Steve. We know Steve, the guy from Boston. He sent me a book, Jonathan Swift. It's a biography, The Reluctant Rebel by John Stubbs. Thank you, Steve, for sending this to me. That was really nice of you. Jonathan Swift wrote Gulliver's Travels, Modest Proposal. I really like uh, 18th century biographies, especially English writers. And then I found this book that I already have in my library, but I didn't know it at the time. The Philosophical Breakfast Club, Four Remarkable Friends Who Transformed Science and Changed the World by Laura J. Snyder. Yeah, I had this. I didn't know I had it. I don't know where it is down in the lower level, but now I have two copies. It's a clean text, nice illustrations in it. Uh, all kinds of interesting things. I like the history of science, even though as a Christian I believe in the, the account of creation there in Genesis 1 through 3. I don't believe in evolution or Darwinism or anything like that. I hold to a, a, a young earth. I don't hold to an old earth. So. But anyway, so that's what I got at thrift stores. That's what I'm reading. Uh, and so, yeah. So tomorrow is a Sunday. It's a new week. And I, I don't know what I'll do next week. I don't have any books coming in the mail. I do have a biography coming in the mail. I think next week. Maybe some CDs. But I really, enjoy, I really enjoyed today reading the American Philosophy, a love story. Uh, he talks a lot about William James. I read a really great biography a couple years ago on William James. I might show that in the, some my next videos. But yeah, so I'm really enjoying this. I recommend this book if you're into the history of American philosophy and how it touches our everyday lives. I recommend this. So that's what's going on here on a Saturday night. I hope you had a good week. Hope you have a good new week. Thank you for the subscribers. Thank you for those who share with me their love for books and their reading habits and why they're bookworms. And feel free to ask me questions. Feel free to share, me, share with me what you're reading and what you're thinking. Until next time, bye.